I know what you're thinking. Every person who's ever tried to learn how to trade has heard of double tops. So you're probably thinking that they're too common and too simple to ever make money in financial markets. Well, today I'm here to argue that point. In today's video, I want to show you how I trade double tops with an unexpected twist and how trading them this way made me a little over $10,000 last week. So to start off this video, we're going to take a look at a live trade I had last week because I recorded the entire process and directly after that, I'm going to dive into every detail of how I trade these double tops with an unexpected twist so that you can decide whether or not it's something you would like to add to your trading arsenal. So if that sounds good, go ahead and do a couple of favors for me. Click that like button. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Go ahead and subscribe if you are new and click the notification bell because we come out with content like this each and every week and I would hate for you to miss it. If you're already subscribed, welcome back. Let's dive into the video after the intro and disclaimer. Welcome back traders and the first thing we're going to do is take a look at a live trade I had on the Aussie dollar using this strategy and then I'm going to come right back and explain the objective rules I have for spotting double tops and then we're going to dive into the full detailed version of this double top strategy with a twist. So let's go ahead and take a look at that live trade and I'll be right back. Okay, traders, so here is a live trade that we are currently in based on a double top strategy that I trade with a little bit of a twist. I completely forgot to hit the record button when I actually entered this trade, but this is a trade that we sent out in email analysis, which is trade alerts our VIP members in the EAP training program receive each week. So I'm gonna place that on the side of the screen so you can see that we did send this trade out to traders and as you can see, we are in it live right now. Currently, the trade is going really well as we are seeing a nice fall in price out of the Aussie dollar and hopefully this decline will continue. In terms of profits, I am just waiting for this market to show me buying pressure at a major level of structure or to turn around and stop me out. I'm definitely hoping for the first one, but we'll see and I'll let you guys know how it plays out either way. So. Here we are on the current price chart of the Aussie dollar. And as you can see, this trade did end up continuing to fall and ended up working out really well. In terms of targets, I waited on exactly what I was saying in that previous clip, which was the market to get to a major level of structure here on this black line and started showing buying pressure. So I exited the position for about a 5.5 to one reward to risk, which was a little bit over $5,000 here. Let's scoop back so I can show you guys the major level of structure, which was right here. And there was also a few other touches of this exact level looking left, which caused me to go ahead and exit this trade. Now, what I want to do at this point is share with you my exact objective rules for defining a double top, because if you don't have that, then it's going to be impossible for you to understand and trade this strategy. So let's go ahead and do that actually on this chart and with this exact trade using market replay. So with the market right here, I am currently looking for a double top. If I see price push up and then push down in a pullback, I'm waiting for price to then push back up and retest this top in order to be a double top. Now, a lot of you may be thinking this was a double top, but in my exact objective rules, which is really important when trading, you want to make sure your rules are objective. So there's no confusion when placing a trade. Some people may think this is a double top right here. And some people may not. If you don't have objective rules, then you're not going to have a way of knowing exactly when you're supposed to place a trade. And I want to make sure in my trading that I know exactly, and I mean exactly when to actually click the buy button. So for my own personal objective rules, as soon as I see this first top made, I put a horizontal line at the top of the bodies of that first top and a horizontal line at the top of that first top, as in the top of the wick, as you can see right here. This little area is what is known as my termination point. Now, it does not matter if there is a super long wick right here, then this line would go at the top of that wick and this line would stay at the bodies. I'm just going from the top of the bodies to the top of the wick of my first top. What I want to see is price push up and at least touch my termination zone. That can be with just the wick of a candle. That can be the body of a candle closing inside of my zone and a wick pushing above it. That 
all is completely valid. What I do not want to see is a push up and then a candle close outside of my termination zone. And in other words, I don't want to see a candle close above the previous high. And why is that? Well, the reason for that is that this is insinuating and showing me that we could possibly see trend continuation because we now have a close above the previous high. That means buyers are likely in control, whereas the opposite is true and sellers are likely in control if we get a rejection from this first top with either a wick that touches it or a candle body that closes in it or a wick that goes above it. Again, all of that is valid. So let's go ahead and push the market forward here. And as you can see right here, before we do that, this candle wick did not touch in this zone. A lot of you may be going, but Steven, it got so close. Well, in my trading, I don't trade based on so close. I trade based on objective rules, which makes trading extremely simple. So let's go ahead and push the market forward here and see what ends up happening. Right here, we already have the touch of the zone, right, with this green candle. So that would be a valid double top. But I'm waiting on a little bit of extra confirmation with this strategy. So let's push the market forward a bit so I can explain that further. And we keep going here. What did I say earlier? I said that we could have a wick go above this area, right? This actually shows me a really good sign of rejection from our first top, and we still have a valid double top. At this point, I am actually waiting for the market to break the neckline with this specific strategy. Here would be the neckline. The neckline is just the middle of a double top. And what I want to see is a candle close below the neckline of the double top. So now that I have a valid double top, I need to see the market break through the neckline. And I know some of you may have seen some of my other videos and seen me say that I'm just waiting on selling pressure, like a red candle or a big red candle. but for this specific strategy, these are my specific rules for a double top using this strategy because it provides such a better edge over the market. So if we push the market forward, you can see that eventually we get a push down. And after that, we get a close below. This is the second thing that I need. So if you're following along, I have my rules for a double top that I just explained. Write those down if you need to. Next. I need the market to break below the neckline and close below it. I need one more thing to happen. At this point, I need the market to pull back, at least touch the neckline with a candle, and then I need selling pressure, and selling pressure for me is just a red candle with this strategy. So all of that needs to come together before I can enter the trade. Let's see if it does as we push the market forward we eventually get a red candle. So what I want you to really take from this is how objective and rules-based this already is. And this is not the complete strategy. I have an extra confluence that I use that I'm gonna share with you guys later on that makes this a slightly abnormal way to trade double tops. It's that twist that I've been talking about throughout the entire video, and I'm gonna show you guys that part of it in just a second. But right now, I need you to understand how objective all of, these, all of this is. We need a double top. And we have exact rules for that double top. We need that double top to break the neckline. We have an exact rule for that. We want to see a candle close below it. We need a test of that neckline. Put a horizontal line there and wait for candles to start touching it. And then we need selling pressure. How do we define selling pressure for this strategy? It's just a red candle. So right now, everything is coming together that we need for this strategy. And you've already seen how this plays out. But since it was such a beautiful trade, let's go ahead and watch it again. So there you go. That is the rules for a double top that I use. And we're about to dive into the one other condition that I like to use with this specific strategy that makes it wildly more profitable than trading regular double tops. But before we do that, I have one more live trade I'd like you guys to take a look at on the Euro dollar trading in a very similar way so that I can give you a little bit more practice on identifying these types of patterns. So let's take a look at that live trade and I'll be right back to share with you my extra condition that makes these double tops wildly more profitable than normal double tops. See you in a second. So here we are on the Euro dollar and I'm seeing a perfect example of that double top strategy with a bit of a twist. So I am going to go ahead and jump into this trade and I'll let you guys know how it plays out. The Euro dollar just had a huge push down. So I'm going to go ahead and move my stop loss down to break even and I'll keep you guys updated on what happens next.
Welcome back. So as you can see, we're actually still currently involved in this live trade here on the euro dollar. And the reason is really simple. And right after this, I'm going to dive into the complete package in terms of this strategy I've been talking about the whole time. Instead of just the rules for entry, I'll give you guys the full condition list as well, which is just one other condition. But the reason for not exiting this trade yet is because the euro dollar has a major level of structure support that I'm expecting this pair to get to. And considering I'm in a trade going short where I make money if the market falls, I want to try to capitalize on as much of that downward momentum and that downward movement as I can. So with that being the case and with us having this major level of structure that price is naturally drawn to in most instances, that's the reason I'm still involved in this specific trade here on the Euro dollar is because my expectation is that we get down to around the 1.175 area on this currency pair. So that's the reason I'm still involved in this trade. Let's now go back to the actual trading time frame, which was the four hour chart and talk a little more about this specific trade. And first of all, when we're talking about double tops, what do you normally see or hear them referred to as? What types of patterns? Normally you hear that they're reversal patterns, as in if a market is pushing higher, then we use something like a double top to find a reversal point and push the market lower. And that can happen. That's one way of trading double tops is using them for reversals. And again, that can work, but what I have found and the whole reason I created this strategy is that although double tops can work as reversal patterns in a bullish trend to push the market lower, an even better way to use double tops is when you align yourself with the trend. So that extra confluence that adds incredible amounts of accuracy to trading double tops when traded in the exact way that I have shown you here, at least for my own personal trading, don't take that as set in stone, go out, test this yourself. This isn't financial advice in any way. And I'm not telling you to go trade this, I'm telling you to go test it, figure out if it's something you want to put in your trading arsenal. If you decide to, that's completely up to you. But what I look for before looking for this exact entry that I showed you on the Aussie dollar, and we're going to go over again here is I want to make sure that we just created a new lower low. That's the only other confluence that I use when trading this strategy is that I want to see a market that has pushed down, pushed up, and created a new lower low. Once I see that lower low, I then wait for all of my conditions to be met for that double top and that push lower and that retest of the bottom of our neckline and the red candle for the entry. So to go over all of this with you in this entire trade, let's start with the market right here. So at this point, on the euro dollar i would be waiting for this market to create a new lower low that's the very that's the only condition that we have so the way we want to look at strategies is conditions and then entries so our first condition is the market must make a new lower low if we were watching the market in real time what do we have right here if i have a horizontal line in my previous low you can see that this market just made a new lower low what my next condition is, and the part of the entry, I'm gonna call it conditions though, is I wanna see a double top created. We have defined rules for that. What are they? I wanna see a push up, I wanna see one top, I wanna see a pullback, and then another top. We pushed up higher without getting a double top. So now what am I looking for? If this is my top, then I want to place a horizontal line at the bodies and at the top of the wicks of that first top. That is what, that's what I refer to as the termination zone, meaning that I'm waiting for now a candle to at least touch this zone and not close above it. Everything else is in play as long as we touch it, whether it be a touch with a wick, a touch with a body and the body closed inside of it, a wick going above it. All of that is still valid, but I can't see a candle close above it. So let's see what happens next. This is exactly what I'm looking for in terms of a double top. Now, this is going to look a little bit odd. Don't get confused about it. The reason it's gonna look odd is because if I put a horizontal line here, you can see that we haven't quite closed below the neckline. So at this point, I have to keep waiting 
Okay. Again, this might be close, but I don't have rules that say I can trade when it's close enough. That's subjectivity. That doesn't belong in my personal trading. And that's how I've made trading as simple as possible is by having no subjectivity or as little as possible. There's always a little bit of subjectivity in trading, but let's push the market forward now. Now is when we actually broke the neckline of the double top. So with that being the case, I know this looks odd. Again, do not let it be confusing. With that being the case, this is now the low I want price to retest because it's the lowest low in this entire neckline situation. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Again, nothing to be confused about, but just understand this is the low that I want to now be retested by price. All of our rules have come together at this point. We have a valid close below our previous low right here. We have a valid double top. We have a valid neckline. We have the break and close below that neckline. At this point, what are we waiting on to confirm an entry? A pullback to the neckline that at least touches it and a red candle showing selling pressure. Let's see how that plays out. Right there, is that not a touch of the previous low? Yes, it is. And is this not a red candle? Yes, it is. With all of that coming together and with the added confluence of having to wait for a lower low before looking for this strategy, it is something that I have found, at least in my own personal trading, to be wildly accurate. And when I say wildly accurate, I don't wanna get your hopes up to the point that you think this is 100% accurate. Every trading strategy has wins and losses. This is just a lot more accurate than trading double tops in the traditional way, at least again, in my own personal trading, it is proven to do so. With that said, let's take a look at one more example, and then we're gonna move on to an even more important topic if your real goal is to become a consistently profitable trader. So on the chart, we have what looks like it could turn into the perfect setup for this strategy. Hopefully you can see that already, but what we have here is a market that has started a downtrend pushing down to a low, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. Did we just make a new lower low compared to our previous lows? Yes, we did. We have a lower low. We then push up to this. What is this considered? This is considered our first top. What do we do at our first top? Well, we place horizontal lines at the top of the bodies of that top and at the top of the wick of that top. Do we trade based on almost right here? No, we do not. Not if we want to trade in an objective manner. We don't trade almost candles. So this almost touched, but not quite. Let's move the market forward now. We get a nice push up again, waiting, waiting. There we go. We have now touched the termination zone at th this point. All we need to make sure is that we don't get a candle that closes above our termination zone and that we do get a break of our neckline. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah. Okay. So now can you see the perfect setup lining up? We have our double top. We've just created this new lower low. Everything's objective. The neckline of this double top has now been broken. Now, what are we waiting for? We want to see the market push back up to the neckline, which it eventually does, and give us a red candle. With that doji right there, that is a nice candle. It's a doji, but it's a red candle, and that's our rule. Selling pressure is just a red candle. Again, there's no subject, there's no subjectivity to this. Oh, and I forgot to mention for stop losses, I use one ATR above my entry candle. That's a lot of information for those of you who are beginners. ATR is right up here. You can see my entry candle has a 15 pip ATR. If you have no idea how to use an ATR to play stop losses, I will put a full length video I did in the top right hand corner of the screen so that you can go over there and check that out. So with that being the case, we have a 15 pip ATR and I want to go above my entry candle. So the high of my entry candle, which is six pips, six plus 15, roughly 21 pips for my stop loss. Perfect trade, right? It's lining up perfectly. And I want to target my next support level, which is right down here. This is the next support level. This price will inevitably hit if we continue in trend to the downside. It's actually right here, but I'm seeing this as a period of consolidation. That's a lot more than I want to get into in this video. Anyway, let's pretend this is the case. So with that being the case, we have our perfect setup, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see this bad boy run. Oh shit, what happened? It didn't work this time? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I wanted to show you this example of what is a perfect setup for this strategy 
but loses anyway because I want to make sure you have the proper expectations when trading any strategy or learning any strategy from me or anyone else. And the proper expectations are to understand that there are no for sure strategies. There is no 100% strategy. Every strategy will go through losses and every strategy will have drawdown periods. So right now, what I want to talk to you about is having proper trading expectations and what you really need in order to become a consistently profitable trader. But before I do, if you are someone who is interested in taking advantage of some more advanced training material and you're ready to invest in your trading future, then we just had some students graduate from the EAP training program and we have a little bit of space available in that program right now. It's the top link in the description. The trade you saw on the Aussie dollar was something called email analysis that these traders get each and every week. And it's also a mentorship program that comes with priority email, meaning anytime you have trading related questions, it'll be me personally answering them. It comes with much more, but I'm not going to bore you here in the middle of this video. Check it out if you'd like to. It's the top link in the description. With that said, let's now move on to one of the most important topics that you have to understand in order to become a consistently profitable trader. And the first one is managing expectations correctly. I got an email yesterday, not from one of our paid students, but just from somebody that found our support email and my assistant sent it to me because of the question he asked. The question he asked was he had a $2,000 account and he wanted to know if he could live and make money and not have to work his day job anymore with a $2,000 account. Now, there are a few things wrong with this and he told me, here's where the expectations come in, that he was expecting to make $2,000 a month on his $2,000 account. Now, in terms of managing expectations, this trader we were just talking about that sent me an email expecting to make $2,000 a month on a $2,000 account, 100% per month. Your expectations in trading are probably much higher than what is achievable. And I don't say that to discourage any of you. Trading is an amazing way to build wealth. I would be nowhere near where I am financially without trading. And I would be nowhere near capable of having the lifestyle I have without trading. It's an incredible way to build wealth over a long period of time. But traders are coming into the market thinking they're going to make 20, 60, like this guy, 100% per month. And what I want to do with you is let's do some quick math. If you let compound interest take place and you make, let's say, 100% per month. Let's start with a $2,000 account like this guy did, right? $2,000. Okay. So if he started with that and did not remove money from his account, which he shouldn't with the math you're about to see, you'll see why he should not. Let's do this with him making a hundred percent a month just for one year. Okay. 2000 times two, which is a hundred percent. You're taking 2000, turning it into 4,000. That's a hundred percent growth. Okay. Let's do that 11 more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So this person, and I'm not dogging on him whatsoever or trying to make anyone feel bad that thought this was possible. I'm trying to open your mind up to the reality of trying to make 100% per month. That means within two to five years, you'd be the richest person in the world if you just left your money in there. He could turn $2,000 into $8.192 million in 12 months if it was possible to make 100% a month. So just try to rationalize that. Does that seem like something that's possible or something that's rational? No, right? That's not anything that is possible. If that was possible, then Elon Musk and whoever is currently Bezos, I don't know who's the richest man in the world right now because I haven't looked it up in a while. If it's Bezos, Bezos would not be the richest man in the world if this was possible and there was somebody doing it. If you could start with 2000 turn into 8 million in a year, then imagine what that 8 million turns into the next year. Within three years, you're the richest person on the planet. If you can make 100% gains every single month. So keep that in mind. And again, not to discourage you, but manage your expectations in a way that allows you to meet them and accomplish your trading goals. 
I was going to end the video right there, but while editing, I realized that if you've been through this entire video and you just heard that entire spill about trading expectations and you're still here, then that means you're extremely determined to turn trading into your career. And you are the exact kind of person that I love to help because I've been there and I've been in the same situation you're in and I wish someone would have done this for me. So right now what I want to do is give you a bonus. And this bonus is going to be something I call the Pro Trader Checklist. And it's eight steps that you need to take in order to create a professional trading career. These are the exact steps that I take traders in our programs through in order to get them from wherever they are to becoming professional traders. And I want to share that with you right now. So let's take a look at the pro trader checklist. Now for this checklist, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit through each of these. And also I'm going to give you a video that we have for free on our YouTube channel that you can go and learn exactly what you need to start checking these off of your list. So for example, right now, the basics is the first thing you need to learn if you're a beginner in any financial market. If you are trading stocks or crypto or Forex, your first step is to understand the basics of that market. In Forex, that would be things like, how does the market move? That would be pips, right? The market moves in pips. In Forex, it would also be like how to calculate your stop losses. It would be like how to place a trade on a brokerage account in that specific market. And thankfully, we have a video that I'm going to put a screenshot of the thumbnail up right now that will take you through accomplishing all of that. Okay. It'll take you through the basics of Forex and you can just look up how to place a trade in whatever brokerage you choose. But I'm doing this so that you can check these off in order. And right now, you can have the basics checked off by just watching that video that you see on the screen now. What you'll need to do is go over to your YouTube search bar and just type in Forex Basics. That thumbnail that you see right now should be the first video. If it's not the first, it may be like the second or third video you see once you type that in. But that's the video you need to watch if you're a complete beginner. After understanding the basics, the next step in any financial market that you're trading is to understand and master technical analysis. And technical analysis is just understanding a price chart, understanding candlesticks, trends, levels of value, levels of structure, support, and resistance, understanding indicators and how to place stops and targets. All of that would fall under the category of technical analysis. Again, we have a video that goes over everything you need to know about technical analysis. There'll be a screenshot of the thumbnail of that video up right now. Go to your YouTube search bar, type in technical analysis, and you can find that video very easily. I'm doing this so that you can now check off technical analysis on your pro trader checklist. Again, if you make it all the way through this checklist, I'm not saying you'll be a profitable trader, but if you make it all the way through this checklist, you'll have everything you need to start your work, which is going to be back testing, developing a risk management plan and developing a full trading plan. Once you have all of that accomplished, then you can go about your trading however you wish, which hopefully that leads to a profitable trading career. And it should, if you take care of all of this first, next, now that we understand and we have mastered technical analysis, the next step you have is exactly what we did in this video. This was a rules based trading strategy based around a number of different technical analysis factors. That's exactly what you just learned throughout this video. And that's step number three, but I'll also put up another strategy. You can go check out called a pullback strategy. And all you need to do is type in, pullback strategy on the YouTube search bar and look for the thumbnail you see on the screen right now. At that point, you should have strategy taken care of between this one and that one, right? Excuse me, must be 5 p.m. Time to eat, I just did a 24 hour fast. I'm hungry as shit, I just now realized that. Okay, next up, after learning a strategy, this is an extremely important part of trading. You need to back test that strategy. Is it fun? No. That's it. No, it's not fun whatsoever, but it is completely necessary. Here are a few reasons. You must backtest a strategy you create or a strategy that you learn because you want to ensure that that strategy is profitable with the way you see the market. We'll all see candlesticks and markets a little bit differently. You want to make sure that you can actually create a profit with that strategy. That's the first reason. The second reason is you want to train your reticular activating system to see that Every time it happens with ease and quickly, that can only happen through practice. So your back testing is your practice. And thirdly, 
The third reason we backtest is to optimize, that might be four, I can't remember, but is to optimize our trading strategy so that we're only trading it on pairs that works well on. Otherwise, you may be trading a strategy on a pair that loses money. You don't want to be doing that. So those are the reasons we backtest to learn about backtesting. Type in backtesting on the YouTube search bar and look for the thumbnail that's on the screen right now. Then you will have backtesting checked off and be good to go there. We also talk about optimizing, which is what I was just saying in that backtesting video, but optimizing, there's infinite things you can optimize for, including the times that you trade based on how something tested through historic data, including only trading a strategy for certain months or only taking trades in trend. You can also optimize for only taking trades on the pound dollar and the euro dollar because that's the two pairs it works best on with a particular strategy. Again, infinite things you can optimize for, but we do talk about that as well in the same backtesting video that I just showed you. It should still be on the screen or we'll be back on the screen now, the thumbnail. And once you go through that video, you should have a good idea on how to optimize a trading strategy. Next, after we optimize a trading strategy, is some of the most important parts of trading that tend to get overlooked by almost everyone that starts out. And that is firstly, risk management. Risk management does not mean you risk 2% per trade. There are three different parts of risk management. Everyone thinks are a lot of beginners and I was the same way when I first started. So don't feel bad if you think this right now. As a beginner, I thought risk management meant I was supposed to risk 2% per trade. And that's what risk management was. But that's not what risk management is. Risk management consists of three parts. Risk management is risk capital, meaning the overall amount you put in your account, right? And when I was first starting, that was 100% of my net worth. When I first started trading, I put all of the money I had into a trading account. That is extremely risky. Trading is a very speculative thing. There's no guarantees in any financial markets. So having every bit of your money at risk in a speculative market, always a bad idea. So risk capital is the first part of risk management. Then risk per trade comes into play. Very true. You want to see how much you need to risk per trade in order to stay comfortable emotionally so you don't go start trading based off fear and greed because you're keeping your risk so low per trade that you're not bothered emotionally by wins or losses. Obviously, you wouldn't be bothered by wins, but you get what I'm saying. The next part after risk per trade is risk exposure. Overall risk exposure, which is like how many trades can I be in at once? If I'm risking 2% per trade, can I be in five trades? Because if markets go crazy, I may lose 10% of that. So this is the three parts of risk management. And the importance of risk management is to ensure that initially we don't blow our account and to ensure that we don't trade based on emotions because that's how we blow our account instead of making money. We want to have a risk management plan that keeps us out of our emotions. In order to learn about risk management, there will be a, a thumbnail on the screen somewhere. Just type in risk management in the YouTube search bar and you should see that thumbnail within the first three things that pop up, within the first three videos that pop up. Demo trading. I do not have my mother's calling. How nice. Can you see that? Probably not. Focus, dude. Anyway, I do not have a video on specifically demo trading, but it's a pretty simple concept. Just open a demo account with whatever brokerage you decide to use and demo trade for, I suggest three to six months. A lot of people try to just trade on a demo account for like a month. The reasoning for this one is to be sure you're accustomed to the trading platform you are going to use. So make sure when you demo trade, you open a demo account with the platform you're actually planning to use. Becoming accustomed to that, the reason we want to do that is so we don't make dumb, for lack of better words, mistakes like placing a order and then placing it with wrong numbers in the order form that would cause problems. Placing a buy order when we're supposed to place a sell order. You want to get accustomed to the order form so that you're and accustomed to the platform so you can react quickly when you see trades. That process may take a month or two for you to get accustomed to depending on the amount of trades you place. Also, we demo trade to ensure that you can actually implement the strategy you've spent so long on in real markets with all of your prior obligations. You may have prior obligations like children you have to look after, like date night with the Mrs. or Mr., like 
Now, I don't know, maybe you love golf, so you go play every now and then. And I know for a fact you have to sleep, right? So there is something in your way of trading 24-7. Demo trading will allow you to see how that affects your trading on live markets. Demo trading will take you from back testing to understanding what it's like to trade with real markets. So I don't have a video on that. Again, it's very simple. Go to your trading brokerage that you've chosen, open a demo account, trade with the platform you plan to trade with. Next up, and finally, the I would say most important part of trading is having good trading psychology. Now, if you complete everything else here, then your trading psychology is going to be better than 90% of people that attempt to trade. Because at this point, you have a risk management plan keeping you emotionless. You have a back-tested strategy you've seen go through drawdown. And you're totally fine with that drawdown because you've based a risk management plan on it. You have proven to yourself that this strategy makes money, at least through historic data, which keeps you comfortable moving forward if you have a few losing trades. You've demo traded to ensure that you can actually place these trades in real time. And if you've demo traded correctly and seen that that made money over the course of one to three months, then that's going to give you an amazing amount of confidence. And all of that is going to lead to having pretty good trading psychology right there. And trading psychology beyond that just comes down to your understanding of your own mental state. And what I've done is created a video a while back on trading psychology. You'll see the thumbnail of it. If you just type in trading psychology again, it'll be one of the first three videos there. And if you watch that video to give you an understanding of your mental state and how you need that mental state to be extremely confident in order for you to have good trading psychology. And we walk through all the ways you can gain confidence in your mental state with that bonus. I also have a video that I did very recently on trading psychology. I'll put the title. I'll just, I'll just do this as an overlay on the screen because I can't remember it right now. I'll put the title and thumbnail up on the screen and that way you can just type in the title of that video in the YouTube search bar and you can go check it out too. I think it's called 20,000 year old brain versus trading psychology. It, it goes through really good concepts on what you need internally in terms of your psychology in order to be a good trader and some of the reasons that losing trades feels so awful sometimes. So there is the pro trader checklist. Don't forget if you are someone who is ready for some more advanced training and if you want me to essentially help you personally throughout this entire process, we do have some space available in the EAP training program listed below. We've just had some graduates, so we have a little bit of space available at the moment in the EAP training program. I walk you through every bit of this through an entire training course uh, beyond the entire training course, which in the training course, you'll see the strategies I actually trade on a daily basis. And it also comes with training on back testing, optimizing risk management, demo trading, trading psychology, you name it. If it's on this list, we go over it and I'll be there to personally help you get through any of these that you are struggling with. On top of that, the Aussie dollar trade that you saw earlier in this video was a part of the EAP training program. That's called email analysis. It's not meant as a signal, but I'm trading based on the strategies you're learning in the course so that you can see how I handle real markets using the strategies that you're learning. On top of that, we do a video every single Monday called the best setups of the week where I'm pointing out the trades that I'm looking at for the week ahead. We have the pro trader report, which is an email version of that video. Again, priority email means anytime you have trading related questions, I'm the one answering. And the best part of the entire EAP training program is that it has a 60 day money back guarantee, meaning at any point within the first 60 days, you decide trading isn't for you or you decide that you just don't feel like you're getting value out of the EAP training program like you thought you would. Feel free to email my support staff and they will get you a refund very quickly. If that's not something you're interested in, that's totally fine too. Just be sure that you keep it locked here by subscribing. Be sure you click that like button if you made it all the way to the end. Leave a comment and I'll talk to you in the next video. See you guys soon.